Good morning. I would like first of all to thank the organizers of this short course for the invitation to be here and thank you as well for your interest in the topic of geoethics and geritage. I would like to share here some case studies on how paleontological and geological geritage frames within geoethics and which common conflicts can emerge from this union. By the end of this presentation, I hope you will be familiar with some of the most relevant conflicts that may affect fossils. There are many and many aspects related with fossils and minerals and with any other type of geo heritage that may lead to ethical conflicts. For example, public works, mining activities or engineering projects which can destroy sites of relevant importance to paleontology. Individual actions to collect spectacular relevant fossils related to commercial, collecting or even vandalism and also to publicate in a non-ethical way. All the dramatic increase in the last years in the use of fossils in research, education and touristic activities or exhibitions. I will present in the following slides some case studies that mirror examples from which to raise reflective learning on individual roles and responsibilities affecting fossils and human rights. First, there are infrastructure-related works that make possible the discovery of new fossils and that raise the need for reaching a proper balance between the development of these works and the preservation of the new heritage. This is more usual than expected, as it is, for example, the case of Loueco fossil site in Spain, for which an amazing late Cretaceous site yielded an unusual and expected concentration of dinosaurs as a result of a railroad project. It constitutes a real case study showing how to manage a geothetical conflict with involved a hundred of scientists and workers from diverse institutions and companies and that museums were created. Another similar conflict takes place when mining plays a role for the discovery of new heritage. In that case, of course, we need the resources, but we need as well to promote some criteria to assist geoconservation actions of the new fossils and sites in order to avoid loss and destruction. The late Miocene site of Cerro de los Batallones in Spain it was discovered accidentally by mining works searching for sepiolite, and it constitutes today one of the most relevant vertebrate fossil communities worldwide, particularly with regard to the evolution, systematics and taxonomy of saber-toothed cats. There is a recent obsession with dinosaurs by many fossil fanatics, with prices rising astronomically. A recent example is one of the most complete T-Rex skeletons ever found, which stands nearly 4 meters tall and 12 meters long and sold at auction in October 2020 for $32 million. That's shattering previous records. At the time of this talk, the new owner still remains anonymous, so where in the world the skeleton will end up is unknown. And this is in part because of the controversy surrounding the trade in these uh, rare artifacts. There are several conflicts to consider here, but the most important is that when a fossil is sold at auction, the conditions of the sale rarely stipulate that the buyer must lend it to scientific studies or to exhibition. So at the end, it becomes lost to science and to the public. And these stratospheric prices are beyond the reach of museums and research institutions to prevent that. Moreover, and in terms of morality, while it's legal, it may be unethical to pay that fee for a fossil. Think of all the basic research that will be funded with $32 million. Let me elaborate on this case study because the ethical status of the following fossil material is one of paleontology's most contentious issues. The case AMBA from North Myanmar in China, which has recently provided the scientific community with outstanding view of dinosaur times, remembering in some way the premise of the Jurassic Park movie. The amber has a high value for selling shops, but it also has a content of fossils with immense scientific value, including, for example, unique specimens of birds, flowers, gastropods, insects, protofeeders, and even some still unclassified vertebrates. However, Myanmar amber fossils are not only a dream for paleontologists, they are also an ethical minefield, as there are several potential legal problems and ethical issues with these collections. First, exporting Myanmar AMBA is legal under the gemstone laws from 1995, but the country does not allow the export of fossils in 1957. 
so it's unclear which law has priority here. Second, massive digs for switching and the raising trade of fossils can lead to the destruction of Myanmar's geo-georitage. And last but not least, fossils come from internal conflict areas where rival political factions compete for the profit yielded by AMBA. Hence, the mining and the sale of the AMBA may be a source of profit for the country's military, thereby potentially fueling that conflict. This brings me to the end of the presentation. In summary, through the explanation of four different case studies, we have seen how paleontological and geological geoethics frames within geoethics. The first two case studies, Loweco and Cerro de los Batallones, are examples in which the administration and the scientists work together and manage a conflict, which ultimately has benefits either for the administration, the scientific community, and the public. The two later case studies, fossils sold at auction and AMBA from Myanmar, are among the most tricky, complex, and still active case studies in terms of geoethics, and they require more coordinated efforts by geoscientists, stakeholders, and decision makers to act more responsibly. Thank you so much.